We finished taking over Jianta City. We're moving deeper into the island, and with the reinforcements we got at the port, we get some new VTs to play with. Now, I'm... Tr like, traditionally, the term new type comes with a few extra upgrades. Oh, we got some. This mission is pretty much the perfect playground for you to go nuts. Although there were some slight snags with delivering these new VTs to the to the warfront. Uh, one of those, the prominence, specifically had some extra goodies that just got stolen right out from under us. A railgun? Yes, and extra armor. As if we needed any more. Oh boy. This so is yeah. about to get silly. Yeah. Yeah. Freaking guerrilla units stole these. And now we gotta storm, like, a village that these guys are hiding out in. <clears throat> and then just steal back the supplies. We're gonna Hopefully be using... before they work out how to use the fucking things. Yeah. So, yeah, for this, like... And they describe something called the Manipulator Arm, which is technically not second-gen exclusive, but it is... This is the first mission where it tells you that this is a thing that is required in a lot of situations. But, yeah, the prominence, it's... Ugh... Words cannot describe how much I love this thing. It is... The, we the weapons it, look a little bit fancier. They're fancier, and they're more plentiful. This this unit, I, I'm 100% sure, has the most amount of weapons that you can choose between, and s still be able to, like, make use of, like, all of them with weight to spare. Or even still, like, go over the suggested limit and be fine. <laughs> But yeah, it, yeah, it's, it is very much the straight upgrade from the decider, and it is like the de facto like second gen unit to go with. It's got little T Rex arms as well, which is kind of cool. Yeah, well, they're technically more like you know, the little gun arms uh, as they were. But yeah, yeah first let, thing let, you'll let notice. Let me imagine this. It just sounds so funny. Yeah, first thing you'll notice uh, with the new gen, we get a new cockpit. Ooh. I, I love Whoa. that closing <laughs> sequence. Hello. Yep. Right, we've got 3D graphics as well now. Yeah. And some things have changed as far as positioning. Like the like the ammo counts and weapon names for our main and side arms are now all situated on the left side. And the right side of the screen is now like way more dedicated to our communications tuner. Primary screen looks a lot bigger as well, or is that just me? Oh, it, it definitely is. It's kind of marginally so, but it's definitely a slightly wild, wider field of view. So yeah, we got ourselves some some new weapons to play with. Our our main uh, main arm weapon right now is the 315 RF. We also have the AS missile, which is the perfect weapon to use if you want to I uh, to. Guarantee 100% knockdown on a on a VT. It does a thousand points of damage, which I think is doubly so. Like the the amount of points needed to like knock over an enemy. But our 315 RF is also pretty good because it's my favorite of the rifle types. I think basically more like just anything that has the RF uh, suffix at the end because it stands for rapid fire, but it's not like full auto. It Technically, it's more like a burst fire because it sh does like a three-shot burst, and to me, that's like a good middle ground between like the single-shot smoothbore weapons we had early on, and some of like the the AR weapons which fire like off like five shots before needing to reload. So it's like, like I do appreciate having like the the reload time just to just so I don't get too carried away and accidentally dump all my ammo. And three just feels like the uh, the sweet spot to have. These choppers are a little bit annoying, but nothing that the chain gun can't deal with. See, I was actually going to ask in the last mission if you have to deal a lot with um, uh, with AR enemies. Yeah, like choppers are pretty much the only ones of those type you have to deal with. Yeah, I imagine the game's not. Uh, responsive enough to deal with like fighter jets and that 
Yeah, not anything that could be that fast. Plus, the choppers have very predictable air movements, which helps. Also, a new Plasma Torch. It's the 22B, and it has double the damage output of the 205. Which was pretty beastly to begin with. Oh, it, it very much was. I liked how the music just stopped very briefly as that Vitz was exploding. Like, v v very good unintentional music timing. <laughs> <laughs> Always fun when that happens. Yeah. So here we go, just blowing up this village, not at all counting as a war crime. Looking for these containers that we have to pick up with the manipulator arm. You know you found it when you see that yellow hexagon to kind of indicate. So you press the button to bring up the manipulator, it puts away your your left sidearm, uh, side and then it, it replaces the reticule, so you line it up, pick up the crate, and then you press the, the, the same button you used to bring out the manipulator arm to put it away. And here's the great thing about it, it's not just for the mission-specific crates. If there's anything small enough, like a human soldier, a tank, or as you'll find in this mission, even a cow, you can pick it up with that arm. Man, that, why, why didn't Havoc Physics exist when this came out? Yeah, the, the, the unfortunate thing is that like when you grab something, you only have two options. Either to press the, like, the button to put away the manipulator arm and thus like either store it or put it down, or you press the same button you used to fire your side weapons and you just make the arm crush whatever you're holding. <laughs> just walk up to a random K, I'm taking this with me. Yeah, and the funny thing is, like, and like as I said before, the manipulator arm is technically available for all generations, even though like this is where we first get use of the second gen, you would think that it's exclusive to that, but it isn't. And I can see why they did that because I'm pretty sure they had a bunch of playtesters and like very daring people on the dev team that were like, oh, I could play through all these missions with just the first gen VTs, watch me. And it's like, well, shoot, we kind of designed some of these objectives to use this little grabby arm. We better have it on everything. But again, that's not the only new thing we're dealing with. Second gen still have some fun tricks up their sleeve and and it's like two of them that are very useful. The first is the uh, uh, the FSS, which I believe stands for like Forecast Sight System, I believe it is. Um, basically, the idea is that it changes the way your lock-on works. Uh, how it's been up to this point is that when you lock on and fire, it fires in the trajectory and direction that the target was last at when you pulled the trigger. What FSS does when active is that it updates like your like targeting direction based on where it's estimating the enemy target to be moving. Ah, so automatically leads the target for you. Yeah, it's like the uh, because the Armored Core games, the classic ones, had this mechanic, but it was very hidden. Like it was always known by people as the double lock, where you locked onto a target and then you waited a couple seconds, and in doing so, it would change the way that your like your targeting would lead enemies uh, but this this is way more upfront because it's a manual type of like mechanic that you can engage on and off and you want that because there are situations where like an enemy VT or other target could be up against the wall and trying to move into the wall and that will throw off your targeting because it'll think that it's moving way farther in the direction than it actually is yeah it's a little overcompensate Pretty much. Also, I believe this is around the time where I demonstrate that the, the manipulator arm is good for grabbing things other than the mission crates. Take my hand, it's my strong hand! Hey, buddy. What you doing down there? Here's cave stuff. I hope you finished, like, producing all the milk you need for these gorillas. Oof, I don't right think they'll be the doing anymore. Yeah. The funny thing is that, like, its animation isn't changing. It's still the same walking animation. They just flipped it, like, vertically 90 degrees. <laughs> and, fortunately, because I'm a humanitarian, I am not going to use the arm to crush the cow. That'd be too mean. There are way more humane means to, like, prepare this thing into hamburgers. So we're just going to store it in the same compartment, I guess, that we have all these crates. That cow is having the worst day of its life. 
I can only imagine what our commanding officers would think when we come back from this mission. It's like, okay, so you... Uh, so you successfully retrieved the stolen railgun parts uh, that the gorillas uh, took from us, and also a cow. Spoils of war, sir. Also, I'm pretty sure that our that our troops could use some fresh milk. It'll be a good motivator. In fairness, Commander, Oscar it's not 3, like we are they not a farm. What the hell are you thinking? <laughs> well. Think of it as a roundabout way of me telling you how bullshit your orders are, sir. You're lucky we haven't relegated you yet. Yeah, so, where are you gonna yeah. where are you gonna find a good pilot at this hour? <laughs> in this economy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, before things completely end, the second uh, thing that I've been using, and I'll probably like describe even more uh, in the uh, videos following this, the second uh, unique feature that second gens get access to, and like anything above this, like third gen, is a feature called override. I'll say right now is that there's that yellow light that's blinking rapidly between the balanced lights and our battery meter. That shows that override is currently on, and uh, the best way I could describe it is that it is a feature that in-universe was implemented into second gen VTs and up because VT pilots were complaining about the limits that were automatically being put in place on these machines and wanting an option to disable them. Yeah. I don't it's have real... words. <laughs> yeah, it's real <laughs> it's real silly, but it's also like quite possibly the single most useful thing you could ever use on second and third gen VTs. It is really powerful, especially when you know how to use it very efficiently, which we'll cover next time.